Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea, welcome back to another best of three. Today we have Astray in the bottom right as the Blue Protoss player and in the top left as the Red Toss we have Trap. Australia opens up with his own gateway hidden behind his natural mineral line. This is a move that I've seen Hero pool. Hero plays for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. Um... The goal here is to kind of make your opponent believe that you're not going for a one get expand. Then you can throw it on the Nexus very quickly. And that's exactly what Astrea decided to do here. Um, you can also try and fake... Oh, look at that. Trap actually believed that this was a proxy 2 gate. Trap is misreading this. And he's misreading this in a pretty big way, I have to admit. Cybercore is being thrown down here. And I, I mean, at, at some point, Trap will need to go and try and figure it out. I, this is not a response. Like we, we see this pylon, or we see this probe scouting for a proxy 2 gate. This is not a response where he wants to attack with this. Once he realizes there is a nexus, once Trap realizes this, he is going to attack with this. But that is not the original intention of the double chrono here on that first zealot and the second zealot. Right now, Trap's going to be scratching his head. He's like, wait, what? Did, did, did I get tricked? Like, what, what, what's kicking off over here? And Trap's probably going to be scouting, well, either around the base or behind the mineral line here. He's not quite sure what's happening. He needs to start marching across the map right now. He has a single zealot, two stalkers on the way. There is definitely some potential here. There's definitely some potential for Trap to deal some damage with this opener. There's no full wall. Battery is even a little bit late. Second unit's not quite starting yet. There we go. Stalker's on the way right now. First zealot makes its way across the map as uh, Australia immediately starts... Um, to try and damage that, you know? Just making sure that that Zealot can just walk up. Second gateway goes down on the low ground. Double Adept is the follow-up here for Trap. Do we still have that worker alive? No, this Stalker managed to take out that worker. Deny any further scouting. So, so far the units lost is in favor of Trap. That's not too odd. As he's the one with more units. His battery is very far back, by the way. With double gateway. Um, quick quick chrono as well on this i would have loved this battery to have been in the wall that way you could have full walled from here on out without really being in too much trouble right now these two these these two adepts this double adept that is coming here from trap could be potentially very very dangerous there is a probe nearby as trap is microing this very very well one stalker for one stalker I think this Stalker will need to be recalled immediately. There's no recall available. No, there is in the main base. It's not going to get recalled. It's outside of range of that battery. And a quick pass happened in this game, apparently. There's a probe on the other side of the map. Triple gates are going to finish up. Astrea still will be ahead after this. But this battery placement really is... Uh, is painful here. If it wasn't for this battery placement, I believe that Astrea would be in a, in a very large lead right now. He'd be up probably one or two more workers. Um, that Stalker wouldn't have died, which would have been huge, meaning that probably that Sentry could have been warped in faster. Right now, Australia needs to cancel this gateway and will need to rebuild it as well. Attack building needs to start soon. Australia is actually uh, kind of close to getting supply blocked as well. Double Sentry at home for Trap will allow him to scout. And that... Ooh, hello, can we get it? There we go. Good block. That probe, seeing those two Sentries, is such a huge tell because you're not capable of getting two sentries if you open up with a stargate so those two sentries just told Australia, hey trap is not playing stargate you can open up with a robotics facility here you don't necessarily need that very fast blink so Australia probably is afraid of something like dt's um the, the opener that trap is playing right now is a very uncommon opener we don't see this very often i mean a, a quick prism for some type of harass into twilight i i am not too familiar with this to be quite honest and I, I don't think that that Astrea is going to be very familiar with this either. As this prism starts making its way across the map right now, wants to be dodging any type of vision that Astrea can really create. Whether that's hallucinations, probes, stalkers, and these two that might be in a bit of trouble. Will get cancelled, and will now get picked up by this prism. Astrea did not quite spot that though. That's dangerous because he's on the map looking for potential adapts, looking for anything that he can hunt with these stalkers. While in reality, should be in the main base. There's two stalkers in the main base. There's no vision on the far left. This prism could really deal a lot of damage. Sure, the third base for Astrea still is faster. His worker count is slightly better. He is getting immortals already. But I think Astrea is kind of misreading this game. He's moving out for some type of aggressive move. The only thing he really needs to do is not take damage. These two adepts are moving in right now. Pro pool immediately. Two workers will fall. Three workers will fall. 
in, yeah, before anything, yeah. Just cancels the shade as well and now can go in for a clean pickup if he wants to. Trap flies away. This means that at any point um, during this game, if Astrea doesn't have any units in the main, these adapts could come back. Um, this forces at least four supply into the main base. I even think he might need to get three stalkers there because if one stalker is slightly out of position, these adapts, you know, they fly all the way around, they can still go in. That's exactly what Trap's trying to do here. At the same time, he's moving out. So he's forcing a bunch of units into the main base. These two adapts now start shading into the natural, will force more units in that position while Trap is moving uh, kind of towards that third base wanting to have a fight there prism starts moving over there towards that third base as well adept in the main gets cleaned up there's four stalkers there that's eight supply at the same time i think blink is about to finish up here great start for trap what started out as a game which felt extremely beneficial in the opening here for astrea ends up with a game where trap is just killing this third base and astrea right now needs to give this up he is tacking into disruptors and that could allow for some type of push later on in the game but first he's, he needs to stop this initial push out out of trap and trap is playing this pretty aggressive i'm surprised by that i don't really see uh, a, a big purpose to continuing the attack here uh, there's five gateways though i didn't quite realize that five gateways is a lot six gateways even oh and he's gonna get two sentries here oh one sentry gets saved by this prism super battery gets forced if this robo gets sniped and this gateway gets sniped this will be an extremely successful push out of trap and i don't really see a way here for astrea to get a bit back into that except with a huge disruptor shot disruptor pops out on the wrong side blink is done blink forward here no more battery overcharge either prism gets sniped on top of that there is no blink and without a prism none of these units are going to get saved the defensive immortal is putting in some work but an aggressive blink out of trap will end this game and the score is 1-0 in favor of trap game number two will start uh, a little bit more more standard than uh and that last game, of course, with that gateway hidden behind the, the, the mineral line of Astrea. Just with a more standard gateway on the natural. Just a one gate against one gate expand like we've seen many times before. Astrea does try to sneak in that base here on the natural. Will not quite get it. Trap is uh, very interested in blocking that, of course. Does not want his opponent to expand before him. Especially because Trap opened up with that second assimilator and with that pylon already. Just means that... If Astrea gets that base down, all of a sudden Trap feels kind of forced to deal some damage on the other side of the map. And um, that's never a situation you want to be finding yourself in on a map that is as large as Pride of Altaris. So on Curious Minds, it is a little bit easier. Astrea is still playing this, by the way. Like, he wants to get that, um, that base up ASAP. Just now taking the Assimilator. Trap sees it and it's like, wait a second. I, th I think I want to go down here again. Because Astrea is just giving signs here to Trap. He is clearly signaling to Trap, hey, I'm not going to be opening up with a Stargate. In, in this case, I think I, I, both players do not enjoy opening up with Stargate in this one gate versus one gate scenario. Trap does not enjoy the, the Phoenix Wars that much, neither does Astrea. And most of the time they, they try to avoid it as much as possible. But the fact of the matter is just that Stargate is the best opener in one gate versus one gate. If someone opens Oracle and the defender does not have a Stargate to build Phoenix, the Oracle player often just gets ahead. In this in this situation in which Astrea clearly signals to the other side, hey, I am not getting a Stargate, I will not have the gas for that, I think Trap needs to throw down a Stargate. I think he needs to be confident enough in that and say, hey, although I do not like Phoenix Wars, I, I, I can play Oracle against a non-Stargate opener. And I, I think he should have he should have played that. I actually think this is an error. And it's a, it's a pretty large error here out of Trap. Um, he is, of course, comfortable in these games as well. But he basically gave up a free lead for no real reason other than... Well, actually, there's no reason. So no reason whatsoever. Salad of Australia will make it in the base, trying to get a scout in. Um, perhaps might be capable of seeing that robotics facility. So let's have a lot of HP. Trap tries to surround it to deny that scout. Is a little bit too slow with that. Now that Robo gets spotted. And Astrea is going to be very happy with this opener. Gets the blink. Gets a second gateway. He's okay. Uh, no Stargate here. Just means that there's no battery in the main base here. There's no rush to get stalkers out. There's no rush for anything really. As Astrea starts marching across the map with a probe. A couple of stalkers as well. Uh. Not quite sure what they're up to, but for now just taking a watchtower, getting a little bit of that vision on the map. Making sure that if anything tries to run by in the middle, Australia will be aware of that. Is this probe uh, 
It has different plans. Uh, it's looking a lot like a proxy. Now, with the Twilight Out, could be a proxy Dark Shrine. Could just be for a proxy pylon with a gateway or just a, an, an, uh, an empty proxy pylon. It's a possibility, of course, with slow warpings to still push. Um, or maybe just trying to make sure that there's nothing here at the gold base. Spro will spot the warp prism as uh, Australia gets a, a quick glimpse of a quick glimpse. It's a bit more than a quick glimpse, practically a photograph in this pro's memory at this point. Like, yep, that, that prism went by. I saw it for almost five seconds. Two adapt once again get warped in, and I can't really blame Trap for that. As last game, this worked out beautifully for him. Uh, six, seven kills with those two adapts total. Uh, and it really forced Astrea to keep units in the main base as well, which allowed Trap to get that third base so as easily as he did. Once again, two adapts will start shading into the natural here. Trap looking to be in good position. Already up two workers. Stalkers moved out of position as long as this prism does not die. And as long... Ooh, I think that was a free pro pair, yeah. Does not quite sync up the shots now. Um, but once again, sloppy control out of trap. This should have been three workers for sure. Does not quite end up getting it. Now goes into phase mode. I think he knew that there was a Twilight Council. This was an error. Taking some real damage on this prism. Some hull damage on that prism. Of course, uh, the shield's already completely disappearing. As Astrea continues the hunt for the war prism. And trap is just flying into parts of the map where there's not necessarily that much dead space. Just barely manages to get away. Weird movement out of trap, just so, so aggressive with that prism, just feeling like he can get away with it. He gets away with it, but that was close. And Astrea, although he lost two workers here, I don't think he's going to be too upset with how that went, because it could have been three workers and the prism could still be full HP. Now the prism comes back. At the same time, we have this hallucination moving into the main base. There's no vision here. Oh no, Trap, you have no vision. This pylon might get sniped. I much would have preferred a couple of pros being taken out here. First two volleys went on the pylon. Now, I understand Australia doesn't want to be going too deep, as of course that does uh, come with some danger. Double adapt drops into the natural base as the two stalkers blink forward. Prism will stay alive once again, but these adapts will end up falling, but not before they... Get three worker kills, maybe a fourth, maybe a fourth target fire misses. No battery in the main base. Quick pro pool here, Astrea. Ooh, Micro's back that worker. Very cute control there out of the American. Who uh, killed five workers on the other side, lost three workers here. I don't think he lost as many stalkers though, did he? Did lose two adepts though as well, so... I guess units lost pretty similar. Australia up seven workers, has blink against no blink. Triple Immortal might make up for that, but without plus one, you still require four Immortals to one-shot a Stalker. This is why plus one is so important if you are opening up with Immortals. Such a useful uh, upgrade to have, to be capable of three-shotting these Stalkers. Even if you're not one volleying, volleying the Stalkers, it's nice to require one less shot. It's absolutely huge. Uh, makes it so much easier to take out large stalker numbers. And that's really all that Australia is working with. He has a crap ton of stalkers. Uh, but at the same time, Trap also has a, a decent amount of stalkers. And there's these three immortals with that. One immortal kind of stuck at home. There's no battery here. Australia blinks for it. Takes out this one immortal. These two stalkers are also going to be taken out, I think. Uh, we have a disruptor on the way already for Australia, who's not pla planning on building a forge anytime soon. This third needs to be cancelled, I believe. Um... And from Astrea's side, this decision is very easy because he's not quite aware yet that this third base is here. Had he had no had he known that that gold base was 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 being taken as a third, I don't think Astrea would have given that his own third base up so easily. Now this disruptor shot could potentially be very big, but could also completely whiff. Astrea so far decides to save it and Follows this up with a forge in his main base. Okay, well, there's four stalkers out here. There's blink for both players. And that means that Australia needs to be very careful with everything that he has. Disruptor is here. Could be going for a big shot. I'm not quite sure if Trap has seen that disruptor yet. I think he might be aware of it. As um, these, these four stalkers that Australia had will get taken out. Or at least three of them will get taken out with the next blink of Trap. There we go. I think Trap only ended up losing one or maybe two stalkers himself. There's so definitely a positive trait. For Trap, who's also currently ahead in bases. And with one of those uh, bases being the, the gold base, that just makes matters so much worse for Astrea. The income is going to absolutely go mental in favor of Trap here. That's potentially a big issue. Astrea's army is still looking weak, but there 
the, the, you always have the ability to deal damage, especially against sentries, immortals. Oh, oh my god, that shot should have connected with everything here. But it did not quite. All of these sentries will stay alive. Both disruptors get sniped. Single disruptor still alive. Will come in reinforcing. Perhaps with the ramp there are some possibilities here. But Astrea's honestly just kind of... <laughs> Okay, well, the ramp definitely gave some possibilities there, as um, that hit a bunch of sentries and the immortal as well at the same time. Fantastic play out of Astrea, but Trap playing that sloppy. He, he should, that, that, that shouldn't have happened. Simple as that, really. Trap should have... Um, yeah, tra Trap was in a massive lead. He still is in a bit of a lead because of that gold base. will allow him to get a very fast forward base as well, especially if he stays low gas. With the Disruptor count growing though, and Trap missing this move towards the left side, Astrea has the ability right now to start dealing some real damage. Blink forward here out of Astrea, moves into the natural, sees the Observer hanging there, knows that he doesn't have too much time. Pylon once again as the priority target. I really believe this is the incorrect call every single time. We have a recall in towards the main base here. Astrea yeah, teleports away as well at the same time, a couple of Adepts probably making... Uh, their way into the gold base. Eight workers go down. I think a blink into the gold I would have preferred over sniping these two bad boys and then just continuing walking here. I mean, eventually you need to recall anyway. The moment you walk into someone's natural, you can see the ability to, to blink out. Like, it's just not possible into the natural. There are no escape routes. You have this, but it's so obvious if you're moving here. It's easy to flank. You need to move away from these rocks. Uh, Astrea's up in workers. Um... Down in supply, but up in upgrade. So overall, what seemed to be a, an, an unwinnable game is slowly but surely turning into a game where he's actually kind of pulling ahead. This gold base obviously is great, but Trap needs to somehow leverage that extra mineral advantage into another advantage, whether that's a quicker fort base or allowing himself complete map control, denying his opponent's fort base. He needs something with it, and so far he isn't quite getting that. And that is uh, painful to see here for the Protoss player from Korea. As he's just warping in a lot of units. And Australia's saying, well, I can just defend on Stalker Disruptor right now. I am getting better upgrades. There might even be a timing here in which, well, depending a bit on the Chrono Boost, in which Australia has plus two. He's going to need to Chrono Boost one or two more times more than his opponent. But <sighs> it is possible. Disruptor Shot is not going to hit anything here. But it is putting... Uh, a lot of fear into Trap, as it should. Double Robo coming down for Trap as well. Still up 30 supply. That gold base is uh, really paying massive dividends here. Does need to transition into an extra base here, though, as we see some of these patches already closer to mining out at this point. I mean, uh, Natural obviously is mining out. Main has mined out already, but that third base here for Trap is also quickly mining out. Australia actually gets a faster fork. That's a real surprise to me, because... If you get such a big mineral boost with that gold base, you really should be capable of getting a faster fort than your opponent, if you already had map control before as well, especially. Um, I actually kind of like Astrea's position here, to be quite honest. Dark Shrine for Trap to try and come back into this game. Don't mind if he does. Don't mind if he does indeed. These Zealots will need to be recalled, and they are going to be recalled. Uh, two of them will fall before they get back home. At the same time, Trap starts marching across the map with his entire army. But he's going to be down an upgrade. He's going to be down massively in tech as well. I mean, Immortals are great, but I, Disruptors are better in, in, in this scenario, right? And if this was two Disruptors here for Australia, I'd say, okay, this might kill. But with six Disruptors, you have an infinite amount of Disruptor shots. And uh, unless... Australia shoots his own stalkers here. I don't really see a good way for him to lose in the next uh, 30, 35 seconds. Now, this run by does have some potential. It's going to start moving in towards the natural, but there's a wall. There's a battery in the wall. And Trap, once again, is forced back home. We'll lose two zealots once again. So there's a lot of stalkers and disruptors still on the left side. And with this vision... Oh, look at these guys. They're just observing each other at this point. Well, not anymore. It's... Uh, his, his co-worker just got taken out, although he was working for the opponent. Um, same job, you know, that just does uh, create a bit of a bond between these two fellas. He was a very sad observer, let me tell you that. Oh, big disruptor shot, not quite going to connect though. 
Australia is actually pulling very far ahead. 78 workers does need to start expanding towards a fourth base at, or a fifth base at some point. Um, his natural is running dry. Third base will start running dry as, as well pretty soon. Trap already on towards a fifth base. Another big disruptor shot. Trap is not controlling this so well. Is not zoning out either. These disruptors in a bit of trouble. And with this uh, th this map vision that Astrea has, it's really difficult for Trap to do anything. And one way to get something done is to force a massive recall back home. A bunch of Stalkers get get recalled back home, but I don't think that is enough to allow Trap to truly move on the map. And once again, these Disruptor Shots are good to control here. The splits on the Stalkers not brilliant, but Astrea once again uh, gets the better trade. And actually, just keeps getting better trades. He can potentially keep pushing here right now. Up five, I think. Was that five? Yeah, up five Disruptors. Up, well, double the Stalkers. The only thing he's lacking is... Is vision for for maybe some DTs. There's one disruptor here coming in for trap. We'll throw this. Oh my god, this is a huge shot. You can't be serious. At the same time, we have these DTs in the main base taking out the cannon here. There's no detection with this army. No, there is. Just popped out of the robotics facility. Is this prism? No, oh, it's going to die. Astrea keeps control of the middle of the map, and I think he's winning pretty hard. Honestly, I think he's winning pretty hard. 29 stalkers against seven. It is one disruptor against three, but if the stalker difference is this big, if the income advantage is soon going to be very heavily in favor of Australia once he starts mining from that gold base, once this gold base really starts running dry, I mean, we already see it. There's like three more patches that are about to explode. Yeah, Australia just is feeling it here with this stalker lead. He can snipe disruptors. He can bait an infinite amount of shots. And I, control of the watchtower is so big on this map. It just allows you to push into any direction towards the goal, towards the left side. I like this, this observer is here. Wouldn't even mind a little bit further forward. There's a stalker on the right side as well, making sure that nothing happens there. And Astrea is in such a good spot with these cannons everywhere in every single base a cannon. Um, yep, every single base at least a one cannon. And a super high worker count as well means that he can easily replace this army. Start splitting his army now, which is definitely uh, a call that I agree with. Just got to make sure that he's not going to get uh, uh, killed by a big disruptor shot out of his opponent. I actually think Australia is looking for, for some disruptor snipes here. Wouldn't mind if he just takes out this gold base for now. Dark Shrine is a good move, of course. Does allow you to always get that multitasking going with a lot of gas in the bank, especially. A couple of zoning disruptor shots here will force uh, Trap to, uh, to give up this base. And that actually means that this is the only real base that is properly mined. There's still some minerals here, actually. Of course, this got taken after the gold. Oh, big blink forward here out of Australia. Decent splits as well. Trap not controlling these disruptor shots at all. These purification novas just kind of hitting grass right now. Ten workers are going down on the side of Trap. More disruptor shots coming forward. Oh, he's going to connect with a lot of these disruptors right now. As Trap blinks forward, we'll be able to get this trade going at least. Another bad rally, honestly, out of Astrea. This disruptor is off of cooldown. I still am not quite believing in Trap, although he is making some okay trades. He just doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the income. Look at that 4k mineral income here for Astrea. 1k in gas. Does he have that uh, the Shadow Stride yet? No, he doesn't, but he's up and upgrade. He's playing Double Forge. He's going to be up three upgrades soon yeah, like uh, all these little engagements they just feel impossible for trap to win and with the disruptor count being what it is there's no real way to come back into this like even if this disruptor shot kills 10 stalkers at this point he's still completely dead and i think at this point australia should be aware of that as he's kind of like triple expanding across the map 92 workers two more disruptors shadow stride how many gateways only 10 gateways i really would not mind getting gateways up to 14 uh, 15, I mean, 92 workers could potentially even go up to 16 gates here. Just get that bank going. It's, of course, not necessary. The one thing that Astrea does need to do is continue trading. If you allow your opponent to get up to six, seven disruptors, all of a sudden, your opponent's army supply is very close to you. They have the ability to zone you out, and they can just survive on four bases. And if you're not tacking up, you could be in trouble against some type of max packs. Max? Max pack? Some type of maxed out army. There we go. Could also be in trouble against Max Pack because that guy is crazy good in PvP, but it's currently not in this game as Australia is looking to pick up game number two in this best of five. And uh, I mean, there's really not that much for Trap to do anymore. Like, he does not have the uh, the capability to get anything done. I like that the uh, Disruptor was trying to force these Stalkers to stay away as 
Trap is looking for damage, but he's not quite going to find it. There's just so many stalkers. It, honestly, even if 20 stalkers just get taken out of the game at this point, Astrea is still just absolutely winning. He has so much money in the bank currently. He is still on those 10 gateways with the extra gateways, I think. Yep, just finishing up. Does go up to 16 gateways here. Some defensive DT, some defensive disruptors, and I just see absolutely no way here for Trap to win. Trap will snipe two more disruptors, but... Uh, I mean, it's just not useful. There's no detection here, and uh, good split out of Australia. Honestly, GG gets called as Australia takes game number two, and we'll be going to the final game in this best of three. Game number three here on Blackburn as we play uh, the three maps that all go into one get expanded. It does surprise me a little bit that we get this. It feels like both players don't really want to play one gate expand. It's like a game of chicken, you know? It's like one gate expand chicken. You don't really want to veto the maps with the with the one gate. So like the, the Pride of Altaris, Blackburn, Curious Minds. But you also don't really want to play them. And then you end up just playing three one gate expand maps. I mean, I know Australia really likes the one gate expand on two gate maps as well. He just doesn't enjoy opening with Stargate so much. And here we go. Trap is the one that uh, that plays the Stargate. I love this. I just really like this opener. I, I, I think it is much better than anything that can be done defensively. I just don't really believe in these Zealot Sentry openers. It's, uh, it, it, yeah, I just don't think it is very good. And it, it tends to not end so well for the player that doesn't open up with the Stargate. It is important for Trap here that he plays an Adept as well. It's important for Trap that he gets down that Nexus ASAP. Actually getting a third pylon before his Nexus, I'm not so sure about. Wait, did he just cancel his third pylon? His third pylon was on the, low, or on the other side, of course. That's what happened. That does make a lot of sense. Um, he's going to need to cut a bit of workers, though, because of that delayed third pile and the zealot finished. So you get 31 31 supply block when you're building that oracle. This is extremely common and not something to be very worried about. As the adapt makes its way across the map, though, Australia definitely has some things to be worried about right now as he, he sends out his zealot. I mean, the zealot is dead. The zealot is just. Oh, no way! You've got to be kidding me! That can be planned. Oh no. I mean, Australia doesn't really require too much scouting information here. Um, the, the only thing that Australia truly requires is. Well, nothing. He saw the Stargate already. That, that force field was completely fine. As now this Oracle starts moving in towards the main base. We'll get that sentry. And this is just bad for Australia, honestly. This is the. Oh no, not that Oracle. Oracle gets taken out here. That is so painful. This, this would have been such a good game here, honestly, for Trap, had that Oracle not just died. Like, there was, that was not necessary. Even sniping the sentry was not necessary. If you kill 3-4 workers with that Oracle build, you're just ahead. Like, Trap's blink is faster. In that case, you're up in workers. Um, and you have the asset of the Oracle, so you don't require detection anymore. You get to skip the robo, you still get to threaten your opponent with two Oracles, you have stasis wards. This is why Oracle is simply superior in one gate versus one gate over the gate expand. But losing the Oracle obviously makes life a lot worse. One more probe will get taken out here by this Oracle. <sighs> On top of that, this allows Australia to get a faster third base because he doesn't need as many stalkers. The battery in the main base will be able to cover the main and two stalkers in the natural will be able to cover the, the natural. This means that now Australia is on a hunting mission trying to find that overlord, or that overlord, that oracle. Yeah, this is... Uh, it's really sloppy out of trap as well and it just doesn't make much sense why... Well, it wasn't a decision, obviously. He's like, oh, let me just lose my oracle this game. Let me take a poor trade. So, trap... Uh, you lost your oracle? And what's the exact plan there? It's like, well... <laughs> kind of from the start, I thought it would be cool if I uh, kill a sentry and then throw my oracle away for free. Like, it's obviously not going to be his real plan. Like that, but... I, yeah, I much prefer being too careful than being too aggressive with the oracle, especially early on. If you do this later on, when your role is already finished, look, I'm all for it. Oh, he's getting a robotics facility while playing Stargate? This is like the main advantage. I am not a huge fan of how Trap is playing this game. I, I really am not. He's gonna have to cut some workers. Third base is way faster for Astrea here. It feels like Trap is just afraid of dying. And I don't really see what he could be dying against. So, so I, I don't understand why he's playing so darn safe. It just feels incorrect here. 
This immortal will stay alive. It should not be capable of uh, getting shut down. Battery on the high ground will uh, make sure of that. Blink is about to finish up, or well, just finished up for Trap, actually. There's no upgrades for any of these players. Astrea so far in this series has been really slow on the Forge, but then when he gets going, does like to get a second Forge eventually. Kind of kind of enjoy that. I'm not sure if it's good. It's just... It's one of these things that Astrea really does like to do in in a lot of things in general. Um, he, ju he just likes getting a double Forge. Like, he likes it in PvT, likes it in PvZ. It, and it might be quite kind of uncommon. I was just, I was looking at this spot and I was like, I feel like there should be something here. I can't remember there not being anything here. I feel like this map changed. Like here, there, you have like this little turret tower or whatever it is, some some do that. But it's not here on the other side. I'm not sure why. I don't think you can walk there. Still, it looks like the unit still got blocked, but perhaps just a visual bug. Happens to the best blizzard. Don't worry. The day you guys uh, put Archon back into the game. I'm sure it's also the day. Oh my god, what is this blink? Oh, well, actually gets an immortal. Not too bad then. Well, also loses five stalkers. So also not quite brilliant. Gets another stalker in return. Maybe can kill this zealot. Will not even attempt it. Four extra stalkers blink into the main base. This trap is trying to move into position. This has to be a recall. Lady stalker is just gonna die. Did he just shoot his opponent's stalker? Yeah. It's gonna get out with three stalkers here. Um, kills one worker. Obviously not quite worth it. This battery is in a bit of trouble. Oracle gets taken out. That's a big deal. Battery is going to die as well. And. What I feel like for the, f the third or the fourth time in this series is that Australia is really keen on targeting buildings over probes and often I think just having a, like a three or four stalker split off, taking out a couple of probes where you're killing that pylon would definitely be worth it here. I don't like that. I mean, your stalker count isn't that much larger here. That's a good dodge, but Astrea does need to be very careful right now. He's getting plus one, increasing his stalker count as well. Disruptors coming out on the side of Trap. And Astrea is uh, is kind of eyeing this fourth base right now. He's up four workers. Disruptor count will be lower as he hasn't even started this robo bay yet. He might just stick with a very high gateway unit count. He's on four gases. Yeah, and then you take the gold. I was gonna, I was thinking, I was like, ah, oh, this forward pylon. It feels that's a base you take with disruptors. Higher gas count, nice defensively. This is the type of base you you, you take, in my opinion, if you have map control. And you want to be playing these heavy mineral compositions like Stalker Zealot or, or just pure Stalker, uh, which is kind of what he's been doing. There's a couple of Zealots there for tanking. Of course, will be great against Immortals. Immortals naturally will start firing on Zealots. Zealots do not take extra damage from the Immortals, unlike the Stalkers. This is very risky out of Trap here. Trap is trying to catch this army, but I, I don't think he can. At the same time, there's a, a large force at the front. Trap's going to be caught completely out of position here. We'll lose a battery once again. Uh, buildings only. Single Zalad could perhaps deal some damage here in that mineral line. As two workers will fall. These stalkers perhaps uh, thinking of moving into this main base at some point as well. Yep, there we go. Forward blink. One stalker gets left behind on the rocks. But might just be used as like a, uh, yeah, a patrol move stalker here for any potential war prisms. Three base against four bases. This gold is about to finish up. Second forge on the way as well. That's kind of what I was talking about. Oh, that's not great. Always painful if you blink up and there is a disruptor there. That actually was a really bad trade. That might uh, kind of get some momentum back towards Trap here, who's been struggling in this game. Disruptor count slowly but surely is building. Four disruptors are out. All of that off of two robotics facilities. Dark Shrine on the way as well. Forward blink out of Trap. Not so sure about that. He, I'm also not sure about this base, by the way. Um, if your opponent has more stalkers and your opponent has map control, parking a couple of units behind these gold minerals is extremely frustrating to deal with. This forward base kind of blocks off that entire attack path, it, it, to my knowledge at least. Trap is playing this more aggressive than he needs to or than he should, in my opinion, as well. As Really, he's the one that benefits much more from having more time right now the disruptor count will continue to grow and eventually you'll have enough stalkers that like if you have 40 stalkers against 50 stalkers the 50 stalker player isn't that far ahead anymore because there simply isn't enough space for these stalkers to be so the larger these stalkers numbers get the disruptors will just completely destroy stalkers they'll just simply be better so Astrea is looking for an angle right now he's not going to be finding that shadow stride is on the way i think this is gravitic boosters that is being researched right now yeah it's the observer speed of course 
Zell is looking for something as well. We'll not find it unless what he was looking for was uh, was a, was a quick death. Then well, he did a good job on that. A couple more disruptors now. Uh, well, actually, none are being built anymore. I like the number five here for Trap, honestly. If he just adds more gateway units into the mix from this point on, I still believe he's going to be in a fantastic spot right now. There is, of course, the danger of that 2-1 finishing, but plus one armor upgrade against Disruptor. Like, it doesn't really matter. Majority of the damage output here is going to be in these Disruptors. I saw four DTs warping in somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it was. Five DTs being warped in. Okay, four over here. We'll join into the Prism. Um, you still have this one stalker though, and it could be playing some major role in this game. Big surrounds being set up here out of Astrea, and we'll actually blink forward. The purification nova does nothing. Blink away. No, completely misses another nova here. Oh my god, big blink forward. Astrea is actually going to be taking out this entire army. Every single disruptor goes down. That is the only advantage that Trap was working with. Was that superior army? Got completely surrounded there out on the map without being maxed this is the one scenario where a larger stalker count matters this is it this is game astrea smelled the moment he saw the moment and he took it he took that bull by the horns and said it's over my friend no more disruptors for you 11 workers going down on the other side there's still a lot of dts this could potentially get very close there's four observers on the map already though yeah it's just going to be so difficult here even if if trap kills more workers than astrea does the, the problem is just this army is way too big. GG gets called. Astrea wins the series. An absolutely insane last game. 50 stalkers around on top of these disruptors. And Trap just not microing these novas well enough. Astrea smelled an opportunity. He took it and he wins the game immediately from there on out. Great advantage leverage there out of the American player. Who should have had a way rougher start than he really had. Um, but managed to con completely control the pace of the game with his stalker movement. All right. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to like, button, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you and bye-bye.